Hello and welcome to the NFL Best Bets video for week 8. I'm your host, Matthew Munner for Lamps.com. Joined here by Jacob Wayne. Jason Gilbo has the week off. Jacob is going to be probably joining us for the rest of the season. So this is, the first, or this is a good first week to introduce him to you guys. You could check him out on the Sunday Slate video. You could also check him out on multiple other videos on this channel or his great work on lineups.com. But hopefully we see more of Jacob and less of me in this video. The way my record's been going this season, I've basically burned through any goodwill I earned from you good subscribers last year. So hopefully we turn it around here. I mean, we're not even halfway done. Obviously plenty of time. Let's get into the picks and we'll do the report card at the end. Jacob, you have one more pick than me, so I'll let you kick it off. Yeah, so the first one I'm going with is the Seahawks, minus three at home against the Giants. Um, I backed the Jaguars last week against the Giants, and they frankly should have won that game. Um, they had more yards. They played really well. They ran the crap out of the ball, Travis Etienne. Etienne had that goal one fumble that basically swung the game. Um, but the Giants are 6-1 and one now, and they have the second lowest point differential for a 6-1 and one team since 2000. Uh I just think this is not as nearly as good of a football team as they're playing. Their offense clearly has been successful. Uh, they're ranked seventh in overall offense at DVOA. And they found a way to make things work despite really not having a depth of skill position talent outside of Saquon Barkley. Obviously, Saquon's had a great year. But the one, where, the one area where Seattle does have a slight edge here is with early down success. Um, their defense ranks seventh in early down success rate. Giants rank 15th in early down success. And... If they can force them into some third downs in this game, I think you're going to see Uchenna Nwosu have a great game here. Uh, the Giants rank 30th in pressure allowed, and Uchenna Nwosu quietly leads the NFL with 31 total pressures. I feel like most people don't even know who he is, and I, he's quietly been one of the best pass rushers in the league for the f past few seasons, so I think he's going to make a great impact in this game. And then Tariq Woolen has made some game-changing interceptions on defense. I think they have some playmakers overall. But of course, the reason I'm betting on Seattle is their offense. Um... They're the only team that ranks top five in EPA per dropback and EPA per run. Geno Smith was top 10, or it was 10th in EPA per dropback last week and is sixth on the season. Um, Kenneth Walker has just been fantastic since becoming the starter. 18% of his carries have gone for 10 plus yards, which is the fifth highest rate among all running backs with 50 plus carries. And I think you're going to see him run really well in this game. The Giants rank 30th in DVOA against the run, dead last in yards per carry allowed. So with a run heavy approach, the, Seattle, uh, the Seahawks can do a lot of play action in this game. And Geno Smith has the highest touchdown rate against man coverage in the league. And as we well know by this point, Don Wink Martindale, his defense is all about man coverage and blitzing. And I think that is a not a good recipe for success against Geno Smith and the way this offense is functioning at the moment. You know, they're just, they've just been great overall, and they continue to do it week after week after week. And I think we have to give them the respect at home against this team. Yeah, can't say I disagree with any of your analysis. The New York Giants and Brian Dable just scare me. I, I'll admit it, I'm terrified. But it's kind of like everything you said I, I agree with. Um, First two-unit play of this year for me. We're moving over to Miami against Detroit. This is a really, really weird one because I am also banging two units against what I think is a little bit of a stance from Vegas, which not not ideal. But I'm taking the Dolphins at minus three and a half. A lot of the reasons I think this game is at this, and maybe Vegas wants you to bet a little bit on Miami, and they're, they're thinking it might be a Lions win, is the Lions actually didn't play that awful against the Dallas Cowboys. They had five turnovers. They had about even yards. The game should have been closer. I also think Miami looked like they had a lot of holes against the Steelers. They did have some weird play calling after the first quarter. The offense fell out of sync after that. I think they'll get back on track. Um, where I kind of disagree, I guess with Vegas is I don't think Detroit played that well in the Dallas game. Like they Dallas only scored 24 points, but they were three of nine on third down Detroit. So far this season is the second worst defense on third down. They're giving up first downs or they're giving up on third down 48% of the time. They're allowing the opponent to continue the drive. And I think Mike McDaniels is going to use that to his advantage. I think the dolphins obliterate the Lions in this game. The Lions gave up 6.8 yards, a carry to Tony Pollard, and while I don't think Raheem Mostert is quite as good as Tony Pollard, I think this run offense is probably good enough to get a ton on the ground. Meanwhile, Detroit does not really have an answer for Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill at all. I, I don't know who in the secondary is going to tackle them. 
They are currently 17th in PFF tackling grades. But when you watch Detroit play, like, there's so much separation from the opposing wide receivers. And you're talking about two of the fastest guys in the NFL. Even if they, And then when they don't get separation, Hill and Waddle, they've been able to make big plays on the ground against everybody, everybody in the NFL. Nobody has been able to really tame these two yards after catch, and it's not going to be Detroit. I think Miami ends up with a blowout. I like the fact that this... Uh, that, that Tua seemed like he was okay in that first quarter. Again, their offense struggled the rest of the game against the Steelers. I think Mike Tomlin and Brian Flores, that's probably the smartest defensive coaching staff on one team I've seen in like 15 years. So they made really good adjustments. That's not happening with Detroit. Campbell is not a good coach. There's not too many good coaches on this Detroit staff outside the offensive coordinator. And I don't think that, that Detroit is able to plan enough to keep up with the Dolphins in this one. I don't love the hook, but um, you know what? I'm still playing two units on it. Like, I really do think Dolphins win this by two-plus scores. And again, it's weird. I don't like that I have to, I'm have. i taking the stance against Vegas in this one because I really do think the public money is going to be all over the Dolphins. But I, I, I think Vegas is wrong in this one. I, I think there's they're overrating Detroit's performances the past few weeks. I think they're underrating what we saw the Dolphins. I think Mike McDaniels is very smart. I think he's going to make really good adjustments, and he's going to have a field day against the 31st defense on DVOA in the league, and 32nd according to PFF. Like, this is the worst defense in the league. Miami's going to score at will. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to add on, full agreement for me, I'm on I'm on the Dolphins as well this week. I also played the over in this game because I do think the um, Lions will find some success on offense, at least to, to push this total over, but... If you look at Jared Goff last week, um, he was under pressure constantly in that game, and 80% of his, of his pass attempts were within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. That's not going to happen totally to this extent against the Dolphins' defense that ranks 29th in pressure rate, uh, while blitzing at the 13th highest rate in the NFL. So, with that lack of pressure, I think they can get some offense going, particularly if DeAndre Swift's going to play. But I think the Dolphins definitely cover this number. Um, the biggest stat that I found was this season, Tua is worth about a full expected point every four plays above Teddy Bridgewater, which if you look at the EPA numbers, that's about the same difference as Mahomes and Mariota. So, so that's a huge gap. Um, and I think I, I think Tua is fantastic. And I think the Dolphins are going to want to use this as an opportunity to really get their offense humming and firing on all cylinders before they get into some tougher games in the second half of their schedule. That was, thank you, Jerry, for bringing that up, because I was going to, I totally forgot my notes. That was the other thing that I think Vegas is holding on to, is like, the Cowboys were able to get tons of pressure. That's why we saw a very poor team against, or a poor game from the Lions, and that's not going to happen with the Dolphins. I just don't, like, to that point, I don't think it matters. I think, again, the Dolphins outpace them. Same thought as you. All right, let's move on to the next one. Yeah, so the next one I'll bring up here is, scrolling up, uh, Sorry, <laughs> this is bad. Uh, okay, we'll go, to, we'll go to Monday Night Football for the Bengals at the Browns. Um, I love what the Bengals are doing on offense right now. Uh, two weeks ago against the Saints, they went really heavy into their shotgun offense, and it worked really well. And I was like, all right, let's see if it, if it, if it plays out for another week. I did end up betting the Bengals last week, and they did it again. They were in shotgun for 89% of their snaps in the first three quarters. Um all but five plays, which were all short yardage plays. So they're really, really leaning into, leaning into this approach, and it's working. Joe Burrow went 21 of 25 for 344 yards and three touchdowns in the first half alone last week. Uh, it's the fourth most passing yards in the first half over the past decade. And I just don't think the Browns' defense has close to enough answers to stop what they're doing right now. And, you know, they ranked 28th in DVOA, 31st in EPA on defense, and... Um, it just hasn't been working. I think their defensive coordinator is probably uh, on the hot seat, very much so. And on the other side, I think the Bengals will be able to pressure Jacoby Brissett. Obviously, we know the Browns have an elite offensive line, but the Bengals rank 7th in pressure rate, 8th in EPA per play on defense. And overall, I mean, this team ranks 2nd in DVOA after their 0-2 start. And I think the market has been rather slow to react to the success that this team has had. Uh, I wish I bat them against the Saints, bat them against the Falcons, but I'm happy to do it again here. I think this is the the best price you're going to get for this team. I think they're going to blow out the Browns on prime time, and then this market the market's going to fully react to where the Bengals are at now. I guess my only question is, it just seems like 
Chubb and Hunt have not been stopped so far this season. And yeah. No, I was like, gonna say, I, I definitely think the Browns will be able to run the ball. Uh, the Bengals are still mm-hmm. missing DJ Reader, but I just don't know how much it matters. And the Bengals are going to be able to put up points in bunches. So if they get to a point where they have a lead and then the Browns are in a pass first game script, they're going to be pressuring Brissett, and I don't think it's going to be functional for them. That's totally fair. I think just the way this game looks like it might go, I think minus the, like, I personally, I, I know this rarely is this ever value and the sports books usually don't give you a value on it but i think i would buy the Bengals down to minus two and a half it's at 150 on DraftKings. like if i can find that anywhere better i would i just think that there's a lot of scenarios where i see it ending with a field goal though uh, i mean i'm kind of i'm in agreement with you it's just for my own peace of mind so. yeah I, I don't hate i don't hate that approach necessarily um the one thing I would say is if you're worried about the hook, you can also just play the Bengals team total over. Um, I think That's a good the point. only way that the Browns keep this close is by running the ball a lot. But uh, Kevin Stefanski is 3-11 and against the spread in divisional games. He's really struggled against divisional opponents. And the Browns are on their fritz, man. I mean, they need this game to save their season, but I just don't think they're going to get it. I think they have so many issues that go far beyond um, coaching and I think they have a lot of work to do to get this team to where they want to be with a Super Bowl contender with Sean Watson. You, I mean, not going to see disagreement here. All right, so this one, J- Jacob and I actually disagree about, but I'm still, I'm still making the best bet, and that's Buffalo minus 11. I think the one area you can look at this game and be like, well, the Buffalo Bills aren't going to be able to take advantage of the normal Packers' weakness, which is they cannot stop the run this year at all. Nada. And the Bills have not been great at running the football. I'm not worried about that. I think they haven't had to run the football. If they want, I really do think in this game they can get enough out of Singletary, Josh Allen himself, um, to, to keep the clock churning and do that. But I also don't think they have to in this game. Yes, Green Bay is 11th in pass defense DVOA, but this is one of the best passing offenses I've ever seen. I mean, them in Kansas City for several years now have keep producing offenses that we've never seen before. I mean, the only thing that reminds me of is Tom Brady and Randy Moss together. And they're doing it without a Randy Moss on the field. Like, Diggs is really good. He's no Randy Moss. They're able to just scheme guys open. Josh Allen makes all the throws. This comes down to me trying not to overthink it. Like, you look at this game, you look at every phase, whether it's DVOA, PFF, Buffalo has the edge. They really do. They have the edge every single spot. I felt like they played really freaking well against Kansas City, and I think that's the second best team in the NFL right now. Green Bay is tumbling. Yes, this could be a a buyback spot, and I agree with Jacob. The market's the lowest they'll almost ever be on the Packers right now, so it's not like you're gaining screaming value. I don't really care. I think this is a 30-3 to type game. I think this is very similar to the Steelers-Buffalo game we saw earlier. I don't think Rodgers is going to figure it out. I think Aaron Jones... We'll see a little bit of success, but this is the number one rush defense uh, in the league, in my opinion. They're number one in DVOA. PFF has them at 13, maybe the true numbers in between at like 5, 6, 7. I, I think they're one of the best, if not the best. So I don't see the Packers being able to run the ball. I just I don't know where the Packers score points in this game. And I have no issues with Josh Allen at home on Sunday night football putting up 30. And it's so then it's really, do you think the Packers get to 20, 21, what have you? And I, I don't think so. So I guess another way of approaching this is, you know, team total overs and unders um, could be in their spot, but I'm just going to take it. I'm going to take the 11 point spread. Yeah, I totally understand the argument. I just, for me, like I said, you're not getting value at this number on the bills. So if you like the bills, which I mean, there's no reason not to, um, you should be playing the team total over. You should be playing player props. You shouldn't be playing the spread, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, I'm a sucker for pain. I am on the Packers against the spread. It's definitely not a best bet for this video, but I'll just, you know, offer some pushback for the content here. The one area where the Packers have been just dreadful lately is against the run. Um, 31st in run defense DVOA, but the Bills don't really run the ball that effectively. They only rank 28th in rushing offense DVOA. And the Packers still have a really good secondary uh, with Jerry Alexander, Eric Stokes, um, Adrian Amos, and, you know, they have a good press, They have a good pass rush. Uh, they rank third in pressure rate uh, with Rashawn Gary, Kenny Clark. Um, 
It's a veteran Packers team that I don't think is going to go quietly into the night. Obviously, the recent results have been really, really poor. Um, that was supposed to be their easy stretch of the schedule, and they're 0-3 in their last three. But I think they're going to be well prepared for this game, and I think they're going to keep it within a touchdown, personally. But, you know. I agree a bit with Jacob here. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to split a half unit on the Bills spread, half unit on the Bills team total over at 29.5. I do agree that maybe it's a better spot. I like picking spreads for the purpose of this video because we often choose spreads. We do dabble in other stuff. Jacob's going to talk about it over under here. Jason does it plenty of time. And we don't talk player props, but there is going to be tons of value in player props. Yeah. And my one, my rebuttal, Jacob, before we move on is PFF has Buffalo as the seventh best rush offense. And I agree, like, that may be a little bit of an overgrade. But I truly think this is an above-average rush offense. They just never need to do it. So if they come in this game and they decide, like, all right, Green Bay's so awful, let's just let's just run the football, I don't foresee any issues playing up the points. But I think we both agree there. We both kind of agree they're going to put up points. It's just, you know, how much is Green Bay being undervalued or, like, is it valued? All that kind of stuff. But let us move on to our kind of shared pick. And I'll, I'll let you kick it off with the Las Vegas Raiders minus two. Yeah, so I, I'm a Broncos fan, so generally I hate the Raiders, but I really love this Raiders team, I'm not going to lie. Um, they've won me over in recent weeks, and I think they're very unlucky to be 2-4. and four. I think they there probably should be like um, at least three or four wins in there, um, if you look at the results. But they're running the crap out of the ball right now. Josh Jacobs looks fantastic week after week. They're ranked number one in rushing offense DVOA, number one in adjusted line yards, which I didn't expect any of that this season. I don't think anybody did, but... You know, the Saints' defense really hasn't been very good overall. The ranks below average in DVOA against the run and the pass. Um, and the other issue is they really don't get pressure on the quarterback. They ranked 28th in pressure rate. And the best way that you can beat Derek Carr is putting pressure on him. He's consistently never been a good pressure quarterback. And when he has a clean pocket to work with, he can find those weapons. Um, Darren Waller should be able to play. Uh, but obviously, Devontae Adams is the guy. And... You know, the Saints ranked 24th in DVOA against wide receiver ones. Marshawn Lattimore's have had a bit of a rough year. Their whole secondary has been banged up. And, you know, I, I, I just I don't see it with the Saints team. I don't like Dennis Allen. And I think you're going to get Jameis Winston in this game, which is great because Andy Dalton's been pretty good overall. I mean, he had those two pick sixes against the Cardinals. But if you look at overall EPA metrics, efficiency, he's been fine. Um, I would rather the Saints have Jameis Winston for this bet. I think Max Crosby, who I you know wax poetic about every week, is going to put some pressure on Winston in this game. I think he's going to make a couple of boneheaded mistakes. But overall, I just think the Raiders are the better team. And they're fighting for their lives right now. They have to. Like If they want to be a playoff team, they have to win these games. And I think they're going to come out very very prepared, and they're going to win this game. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of another spot. So we've, we just got the DraftKings numbers, and right now 70... 2% of the handles on the Dolphins, just going back there really quick, but also the Raiders, 68% of the handle. Any concern here that the line is moving the opposite way of the money, because it just dropped down to one and a half for the Raiders. Yeah, you know, I've kind of realized that those numbers matter more for college football, um, where information is less available. Um, I like looking at that stuff and backing those early money moves early in the week, but in the NFL, man, like, I just thought about last week with the Chiefs and the Niners. Like, <laughs> I bet the Chiefs at minus three early in the week, and it, and it moved down. I think the Niners might have even been favored some places by kickoff, and the yeah. Chiefs just waxed them. So I think it matters a little bit, but also, like, I'm not going to prioritize that over my handicapping of the actual matchup and the players nearly as much as I, I might for college football. So I think that's where I'm at with that stuff right now. Um, in some situations, I would take that as... You know, a reason to be less bullish, but I really just think the Raiders are the better team here. No, I mean, I, I completely agree. And it's not like last week Vegas made a killing where they tried to take a stand. So, I I agree. Um, yeah, let, I'm checking the number now. 80% of the money was on the Chiefs and the line was going the opposite way. So, yeah. very similar to what's happening in this game right now. And it, it's not like the Chiefs ran into any issues. That is, I, I agree. I completely agree. And I, I, I keep seeing, like... Your thoughts. I follow these guys on Twitter who work for the sports books and post like, you know, the, the most heavy, heavily public bet teams for the week and everything like that. And I see people commenting like, all right, firing up my um, Niners bet or whatever. And like a lot of the time that doesn't work. <laughs> like 
it doesn't yeah. always work that way. Um, over the grand scheme of things, like Vegas obviously wins, but I don't think you you can just go in and automatically bet on the team that has less of a handle in any given game. Yeah, I mean, there's certain places they want, like, they won with the Dolphins, they won with the Patriots, um, you know, with, with little money on the Bears, little money on the Steelers, but... It's also like there's, we've been doing all the Sunday and Monday night football games, and there's been a lot of times recently that the, the public's won in there. It's not as big of a margin in the NFL as people will think, I think, in, in my opinion, on how much Vegas wins you know, each and every week. Yeah. Again, yeah. One, um, one thing I want to add quickly, too, is like underdogs have been winning at such a high rate this year that I think Vegas is starting to shorten these numbers a bit. Um, I think earlier in the year you might have seen – uh, the Patriots favored by a full field goal against the Jets. You might have seen the Raiders minus three and a half at the Saints. Um, and like th- th- that's a different ball game when you look at those types of numbers. Titans are only minus two at the Texans right now. Like I think they're shortening these numbers in, re- in response to how a heavy of a hit rate there's been on the um, underdogs this year. And I think it might be an opportunity to go back and take some of these favorites. Yeah, I agree. All right. Oh, you have one more. I almost closed it up. Oh, yeah. We'll go over that. Um, My last one, I'll keep it kind of short, but I like the over in the cardinals Vikings game. It's been steaming up this week, so I'd recommend getting that in as soon as possible. But the the Cardinals' defense is still terrible. Um, you know, they, they, they played decently well against the Saints, but it was really because of those two pick sixes. And, like, they still rank 27th in DVOA against the pass. Uh, Vikings are coming off their bye week. I think they're going to have – Plenty of success with Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, um, Irv Smith in a really nice spot. I'm going to talk about him and player props later in the week. But overall, I think this, this offense is going to have plenty of success. But, you know, the Cardinals got DeAndre Hopkins back last week, lost Marquise Brown. They're not going to have quite the same vertical threat uh, over, the, over the top explosiveness. But I think Kyler Murray's splits in his career have consistently been better with DeAndre Hopkins in the lineup. I mean, for obvious reasons. But I think he'll find plenty of success against a defense that ranks 31st in DVOA against wide receiver ones. Um, I just don't think either of these defenses are really scary, and I think both offenses should have plenty of success. Um, I bet the over in that Cardinals Seahawks game earlier in the year, and that certainly didn't hit. It was mostly because of some bad red zone luck. Um, and you know that could happen this week, and that would suck. But I, I like the over here. What do you think? No, I, I agree. I mean, I'm still. I feel a little scarred by the Packers and Eagles games where, for the Vikings, where I thought it was going to go over. But then you, they won on a nice run of Lions, Saints, Bears, all, all clearing the over. The Dolphins game was a little weird. I will say that was probably the best performance from Vikings defense. Of course, they were playing against Teddy Bridgewater and Sky Thompson, so take that with a grain of salt. But I was surprised how well they were doing on third downs through that game a little bit. It, nothing to worry about from your standpoint, Jake. Jacob. I, I lean the over with you. <sighs> I'll decide by the time this video comes out in the comments if I if I'm gonna make it a play too because like that's how much I like it. it. It makes a ton of sense for me for the Vikings to score 28 in this one. So really, it's like, do you think the Cardinals are getting the 21? And uh, my only concern would be the Cardinals in the red zone, where I think the Vikings have played okay in the red zone. It's not Mike Zimmer era level efficiency, but you're also talking about a team that couldn't get it done against the Seahawks. So. Well, well, on these numbers here, the, the Vikings are the worst team in the NFL in red zone efficiency, according to this. So, um, one thing I did want to bring up about that Dolphins game, though, you, you mentioned that, is the Dolphins actually had 458 yards of total offense. They moved the yeah. ball re- really well, 23 first downs. They just had three turnovers. So, you know, I, when you, whenever you bet overs, man, like there's going to be times where you get some bad turnover luck, some bad red zone luck. You know, a, a drop here, a drop there. Like, that stuff's going to happen. Um, but I think on the whole, like, the over's going to hit in this in this game more often than not. So I'm happy to go there, and this will be a game to target for overs on player props as well, I believe. Fine, Jacob. I need to make up all the units I can. Half unit from me. So we got <laughs> Seattle Seahawks plus, minus three for Jacob. I have the Miami Dolphins minus three and a half. Two units on that one against the Detroit Lions in Detroit. Bengals minus three and a half for Jacob. I'm on the Buffalo Bills minus 11 at a half unit in the Buffalo Bills over 29 team total points at a half unit. Las Vegas Raiders minus one and a half. Both of us have a unit on that game. And then Jacob full unit. It was really his pick over 49 for the Cardinals and Vikings. Talked me into a half unit. It, it, it should it should be an over. It really should, but we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Let us head over to the betting report card, which... Jacob has not been a part of thus far. 
another absolute garbage week from yours truly. So I'll go over mine first. Panthers, I had a half unit um, on both the 0 to 10 team bin and under 13 and a half because I wanted to take a little bit of risk that they would score under 10. Oh boy, was I wrong. The Buccaneers are garbage. I'm so upset about this game. I don't think anybody, including Vegas, saw that coming. Um, it was just a very porous performance from the Buccaneers team as a whole. I thought that would be the game they kind of come together. It seemed like Tom Brady was really focusing on football. I, I don't know. They're just not a good team. And then the Chargers game, I, less unlucky and more just wrong. Give credit to Jacob, who was actually on the Seattle money line. I really thought the Chargers secondary was going to slow down the Seattle offense, and it didn't, and Kenneth Walker had a field day like Jacob predicted. Um, the Chargers offense was okay, but I, I'm done betting on them until they have a change in coaching staff. I Once they do, I think this offense is going to be in a, a screaming value next year especially the first few weeks of the season. But as of right now, it's just, it's so bad. So I'm all the way down to six and 13 minus six units, which is literally the polar opposite of what I am on the Sunday videos. But that not giving excuses here. I have not been good at picking my top few picks every single week. I've definitely not been good with game picks. I'm making a lot more on the player prop side. Jason, on the other hand, went two and one, got that Kansas city pick, which I should have locked in with him and the under on the Jets Broncos game. Another one I probably should have stolen from him. And uh, the Falcons plus six was a loss, but um, not too bad. Another one Jacob was actually right about. So Jason moves to six yeah, and seven I'll, minus one unit. Go ahead. I'll, I'll give Jason a slight pass there, though. Um, the injury report for the Falcons got progressively worse throughout the week, and then AJ Terrell got hurt mid-game. And once that happened, I mean, their secondary had no shot. So Yeah, 100%. I have the opposite excuse. I'm pretty sure Seattle will end up with more injuries than the Chargers in that one, and they still got their butts kicked. So that's going to end it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you liked it, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite picks. We'll see you for next week. See if I ever improve, and uh, enjoy.